Antler's assumptions in artillery after such a good day's riding the muse trips so hard today. Bjorn's still thoroughly doodled on arm snaps out and steadies Lil's as her nasty fall is turned into a smooth catch and she swung to safety even while still gripping the box that badly unbalanced her. What is in there that you can't just shove it into an Axiom pocket? He asks Lil's who chuckles at him. My Tsiliki collection, she says cheerfully and then starts rushing again, implying that they're not in danger due to her running around and potentially falling on them? Bjorn asks even as Holly brings in a load of her own clothing. What's not in danger? Holly asks. Something called a Tiliki? She has a collection of them, Bjorn says. Oh, those are little art pieces, inexpensive and cute. You arrange them and they start projecting a picture together. Wait, that weird mosaic I spotted. That was the Tiliki collection, Holly says before her antlers start glowing, and she throws her bag of clothing to the main bedroom and it opens to stack all her clothing in proper little bundles on the bed. It's about finding your own style. They're really popular in the fashion industry. Some girls have their entire walls covered in silicone. Hmm. And they're sensitive to axiom? To some kind of axiom effects. A space twisting one wipes them. They can be remade, but if you have anything you like in it beyond a basic white light, then it's just gone. Holly says. Makes sense. He replies and Holly gives him an odd look before her eyes widen. Don't tell me you're already done moving in. I am though. I shoved everything into an Axiom pocket and just moved it dresser, drawers and all. You're kidding. Same with my armory. I carried everything of mine in my pockets. Well, that explains why you're helping everyone with everything. Holly says wryly. What? It's a common technology. It's used all over the place. My underwear drawer has an expanded space where I've got a case of grenades and three different kinds of shotgun. Bjorn protests and Holly face palms before laughing ruefully. Of course, she says. All right, I just need to pack my own things away and then we can all start poking around this area and seeing what's close. Sure thing, Bjorn says cheerfully before calling out to the rest of the apartment. Anyone want any help? No. They all chorus back and he shrugs before starting to walk around. He leaves a hallway that has two bathrooms, one on either end, and a total of five bedrooms. The hallway leads right into a dining room that has a large pair of screens that give a view of the gardens that are a level above them. Mostly because there are gardens every few levels. They're not only beautiful to the eye, but they're just perfect for running recruits through to adapt them to marching and more. He claps three times and calls out Tropical and it shifts to palm trees, tall grasses, and an ocean in the distance. He considers before clapping three times again boreal forest, he says, and the image is pine trees, cedars, in a snow-covered area. There we go. He steps away from the table and then pokes his head in the room to his left. It's a living room with a large screen on it, numerous plush couches and shelves full of entertainment, as well as a few tables to use as footstools or to have snacks on. There's another door that leads directly outside, well, outside after the coat room, which has a huge number of scanners and can at a moment's notice lock down with tritite plating and seal in just about anything proving itself hostile. He walks to the opposite, and it's a business room with standing desks and a couple plus chairs for deep thinking within. Is another doorway in it that has a locked and bolted door to his armory. He then heads back to the dining room and into the last doorway out. The kitchen, Big fridge to the left side, huge freezer opposite. Far left corner has a dedicated drink fridge and across is a specialized preservation shelf where things are suspended from decaying and even keep their temperature, which made it second to none for storing leftovers on as it stayed just as hot as you wanted. Plenty of counter space, central island with drawers full of either food or cookware. Lots of everything you need to feed an entire family. He closes his eyes and remembers for a moment. The simmer and smell of meatballs tickles him for a moment, and he almost scoffs at himself. He's married a bunch of herbivores. It'll be a rare treat to have the old family classics. The flurry of movement continues in the apartment for a while until everyone finishes up, and they're all bundled outside to start looking around the actual area they're in. It's a more community-focused one. Lots of areas that are fully dedicated to apartments and the like. 
But there are numerous stores that really show off just how downright crazy a military compound can be. Deject tech outlets for the really scary looking guns right beside secondhand bookstores and flanked on the other side by a bistro that specializes in human sized portions. The area is mostly a covered floor, but there's almost a hollow tower like effect with a combination of jump pad landing points, teleportation points and stairs all working together to allow enormous vertical movement. If you jump the railing, you're expected to have some kind of answer to potentially falling several hundred stories. Mostly because there was also a very loud, obnoxious, and public alarm system that would catch anyone that screamed on the way down or flailed. It wasn't a perfect safety system. You could be knocked out and thrown over the side. But few safety systems worked against someone actively homicidal. Or truly, honest-to-goodness probability, skewing bad luck. Hey, look at that. An undaunted art store? Salas asked, pointing down the way, and Bjorn turns to regard it. Oh, that. I spotted it as we were moving in. Want to take a... He begins and is already being led towards the little art gallery. Thankfully, whoever's running the place actually has something approaching a sense of taste, and they're not instantly bombarded with crass songs, bright colors, and insane poetry. In fact, aside from the cash register and guard near the door, they seem to have opened up into a very tasteful photo gallery with images of numerous alien worlds and life on display. Irma is already cooing at the image of a rabbit that has an undaunted man riding on its back for scale. The creature must be the size of an elephant. Teridus Megabun, proper name Lagomorph Megatrudus, the pet you always want but will always regret. James Fisher 6, two on back for scale. Photo by Byron Uther. Irma reads out, that adorable thing must be bigger than all of us put together. And yet you still want to hug it. Of course. Look at it. Look at his twitchy little mega, Bjorn interrupts. Twitchy nose. So cute. Irma pushes ahead anyways. Mirage whales. What's the caption? Actually 30 meters long and 20 meters distant, Lils reads out. That sounds dangerous. Trinary sunsets, Holly says as she looks over an entire collage of different colored triple sunsets arranged in such a way as to look like a sunset themselves. Oh. I like this one. We've got more, the cashier says walking up into the group. For a bunch of meat-headed killing machines, there is a shocking amount of depth to them. I feel like I should be insulted by that, Bjorn says, and the receptionist looks at him for a moment and huffs. What? You wouldn't understand the mind of the artist. Am I seriously going to get art snobbed? Bjorn asks, and the receptionist's nose goes up in the air. If the sprinklers go off, you're going to drown. We don't use sprinklers in here, we use thermal suppressant auras. She snaps and he points at her. The guard at the door shrugs. So what have my fellows been slapping together? Photos are one thing, but I was... Bjorn begins and she flows around him and opens the door to the next room where paintings are hanging in mass. Unlike those with only blood and war in their souls, some of your kinsmen have something approaching a spark of wonder within them. They brought it out in a manner most... She starts to go off and Bjorn shakes his head and just leaves the store's gallery. He waits next to it for the girls to come out, and Vera pokes her head out almost right away. You okay? I'm not interested in looking at art while being insulted. You girls can have fun, but I'm done being in there, he says, and she nods. In less than a minute, everyone else is out with Holly carrying the collage of triple sunsets out. I didn't mean to rush you girls. Believe me, I can wait a while, he says gently. It was less that and more how snobby she was acting, Holly says. It's fine. I didn't mean to... He starts to say, and one of Irma's many hands holds a finger to his lips. That's enough of that, she says. We had a little talk yesterday when you were getting your training on. We've asked around a bit, and honestly, you're still stuck in cruel space. Yeah, I, I'm going to assume you mean mentally or emotionally because... Bjorn begins before holding up a hand, and with some concentration, electricity starts arcing up it visibly. I don't think I can do this back in Sweden. Not what we meant, Lil says. It's something all you undaunted seem to keep forgetting. That out here, beyond the clawing grasp of the null, we take care of you. Vera says and he smirks. Well, that may be the normal situation, but we undaunted aren't normal, he says. Maybe. You might not be normal, but when normal meets abnormal, well, a balance has to be found. 
Vera says. One we're still looking for. Bjorn remarks. So now that we've had our fill of art, where to next? How about we hang this up first and head out again? After all, I have a class I need to teach later today, Holly says, and there's some consideration. First, however, there's an overstock store that they spot, and soon enough they're walking among the massive pallets of overstock goods. When the galaxy goes for something, it goes big in every way. Bjorn actually can't help but chuckle at some of what he sees in there, particularly the redefinition of bulk on the washing machines and dryers. What's so funny? Salas asks. Just a little something my cruel space born behind keeps forgetting. Another thing. Well, forgetting is the wrong word. I know the galaxy is big with a lot of people in it, but seeing it and knowing it is different. This store sells a small amount of product. Other stores can shift at massive markdown. That's a percentile of stock, I think. Well, look at it. We have towers of stuff. That's how much bulk there really is. And Bjorn begins to explain before a creaking sound is heard. Oh, ho! oh shit, everyone move. A woman calls out and a Metax suddenly dashes by in midair holding something to her torso before a groaning sound can be heard followed by crashes and screams. Bjorn is already moving with Holly right behind him even as a tower of products crash down. The sound of shattering plastic, creaking metal and screaming rings out as a Nagasha is partially crushed underneath. More of the devices, maybe dishwashers, continue to rain down and Bjorn moves forward and catches one that's about to crash down on the woman's head. He puts it to the side and then deflects another and another. Hang on, he says, even as he feels his adrenaline spike and he pours the axiom into it. Time slows, the world loses, its color and the dishwashers are frozen in midair as he reaches down, grabbing the chain on his belt and focuses. Then after a moment, he and the Nagasha are a solid 10 meters away from the danger zone and reality is still moving at a snail's pace. Her tail is badly battered and he activates the emergency feature on his communicator before tucking it away and then jumping up and over the pile to see if he can spot anyone else trapped under it. There is a slobe rushing out from under several dishwashers and a Tret woman has been pulled out by another undaunted who turns to him even in the frozen and still world. Bjorn points to him gestures to his eyes in the pile before pointing at his hand with the fingers bent but not in a fist. The other man holds up three fingers and indicates the slobe who's saving herself. The hurt trat and then wiggles his hand like a snake and pointing at the pile. Bjorn flashes a thumbs up and makes a motion as if grabbing something. The other man nods. Bjorn touches down and immediately jumps back over the pile even as the sounds of the world are slowly starting to return to him. He crests over the growing mess and lands on the other side between the girls and the pile before the adrenaline starts to finally clear out of his system. It just gave him a couple minutes inside a few seconds. That's all he needed. He pulls out his communicator as the color returns. What's the emergency? Dispatch asks. Medical, he says before summarizing the situation and even before he's fully finished, medics suddenly slam into the ground on either side of him and immediately start to move. Well, shit. Glad we didn't just go to our apartment, or Miss Nagasha here's day would have been far worse. 